the most controversial and difficult Mishnah in the entire Pirkei Avos is Mishnah number five in chapter number one. The Mishnah reads, Yosei ben Yechanan ish Yerushalayim Oimer. Yosei, the son of Yochanan, the man of Jerusalem, would say, Yehi Vezcha Pasuach Lidavacha. He used to say that, let your house be wide open for guests. V'yiu Aniim B'nei Vesacha, and treat the poor members and treat the poor as the members of your household. And now for the controversial piece. The al tar im ha'isha. Do not indulge excessively in conversation with the woman. Who is the woman? Says the Pirkei be ishtay amru. We are referring to your wife, one's own wife. Kavuchaymer, the eshes chaveiro. How much more so does this rule apply to the wife of your neighbor? Mikan amru chachamim. From here, our sages have declared: Kol hamar besicha meisha. Anyone who indulges excessively in conversation with a woman. Number one, you should know, causes evil to himself. Number two, neglects the study of Torah. And number three, and will in the end, will inherit the purgatory. The person will go into what we call hell. What does this mean? What is the meaning of this Mishnah here? So number one, what is the meaning of Sicha? Sicha is idle chatter. It doesn't say don't speak with your wife, Torah, and mitzvos. Rather, it says Sicha. Sicha means idle chatter. Number two, what is the meaning of Ish Yerushalayim? What does it mean that this author of the Mishnah, Yesei ben Yechanan, was the man of Jerusalem. Number three, why if you do divith, why if you do speak with your wife excessively, you cause evil to yourself, and you will violate the study of Torah, and the end you will go to the purgatory. Why does the Mishnah have to tell us all these punishments? Why not simply say, don't do it, like we find in the previous Mishnas? Okay, to understand these questions, to understand this Mishnah, we begin with the words of the Medrash Shmuel, a commentary, a famous commentary on Pirkei Avis, who says that this Mishnah is really a continuation from Mishnah number two. In Mishnah number two, it says, Shimon Tzadik told us that the world stands upon three things. Torah study, number one. Number two, Aveda, which is prayer and serving God. And number three, Gemilas Chasadim, acts of goodness and kindness. And so, after Shimon Tzadik makes the statement in Mishnah number two, comes along Mishnah number three, Antigna Yishisoychai, and he talks about the importance of serving God how you should be a servant of God. It shouldn't be for the sake of reward, but rather to serve God for the sake of serving Him. Mishnah number four goes on to say, you should know that one should have a house opened for rabbis, and the house should be a home of Torah. And now in Mishnah number five, comes along Yosef and Yechiran and says, and explains how one fulfills the obligation of good deeds. Uh, acts of goodness and kindness, and that is by feeding the poor. That's one introduction. Another introduction, and another way of looking at it, is that in mission number four, we talk about two sages. 
Yosei ben Yezer ish Sreida. The first one is Yosei ben Yezer. The second one is Yosei ben Yechina. And he was Ish Yushalayim, he came from Jerusalem. These were two rabbis who together they led the Jewish people. In other words, up until that time, there was one leader. However, Yesei ben Yezer and Yesei ben Yechanan were the first group of Zugim, the first group of peers or twins that began to serve the Jewish people, being that according to the commentaries, the knowledge and the clarity and the depth already was no longer there amongst the leaders. And because of that, one leader was not enough, but rather they needed to have two leaders. So comes along Yosef ben Yezer and says, the number one thing is to have your house open for Torah. Comes along Yosef ben Yechanan, the second rabbi in the pier, and says, look, it's true, Torah is important, but we have to complement Torah equally with Gemilas Chasadim, with the importance of acts of goodness and kindness. And furthermore, today we are told that the acts of tzedakah, of charity and goodness and kindness, even override and take precedence over the study of Torah. So, in this Mishnah, Yosei ben Yechanan begins to exalt the role of the Jewish woman and the role of the woman in general. And that she is the Akeres Abayus. She is the foundation of the home. She is the mainstay of the home. And that, as we know, when Mashiach will come, Eishas Chayil, Ateres Bailo, the woman of valor will become the crown of her husband, implying that the role of the woman will become greater and apparent before all the eyes of all the nations of the world, that it, it is truly the crown and therefore proceeds and is exalted over the role of the male. And furthermore, the Arizal tells us that a husband and wife are really two halves of a soul. In other words, when a man does a mitzvah, even before he met his wife, he put on tefillin at the age of 13, he gave tzedakah, he gave charity, this mitzvah that he does, that he performs, the wife-to-be already is getting credit for this mitzvah. Why? Because she is half the soul. Similarly, when she does a mitzvah, like lighting the Shabbos candles, a mitzvah that has been placed upon the Jewish woman, the husband-to-be already gets the mitzvah. So the three-year-old girl is lighting Shabbos candles every Friday night, and her husband-to-be is receiving the reward as well, even though he does not know he's going to marry this woman. So really, husband and wife are a partnership. This also explains why at a wedding there's so much joy. What is a wedding? A wedding really is, I found you. In other words, from the time of birth, the soul was separated. Half of the soul went into the male. Half of the soul went into the female. And so for 18, 20, 30 years, we were searching for each other to find each other. And finally, finally, I found you under the chuppah. I found you under the wedding canopy. Can you imagine the joy? For example, you have this amazing 10 carat diamond and you lose it. And every day you're looking for it. Every day you're searching for it. One year, two years, three years. You almost give up hope. And one day you find it. Can you imagine the joy that a person would experience after finding this, this amazing diamond that you were searching for for so many years? And the same is true with marriage. What is marriage? You are finding this diamond that you were searching for all these years and finally you are reunited. So with this introduction, we can now appreciate the Mishnah. Mishnah number Dalid, Mishnah number four, speaks about the role of the husband. Primarily his job is to daven and study Torah. 
And then Mishnah hey, Mishnah number five, speaks about the role of the woman. Primarily, this is a role that is gemilas chasadim, acts of goodness and kindness, tzedakah. And through tzedakah, that is the way we are going to bring the ge'ula. Tzedakah mekareves es ha'ge'ula, tzedakah brings close the redemption. And furthermore, the Arizal tells us that the souls of the women of our generation are a reincarnation of the souls that left Egypt, that left Mitzrayim. And it was in the merit of those women that we were taken out of the land of Egypt. As the Gemara tells us, it was in the merit, Bishar, Noshim Sitkonius, Nigula, Visenu, Mieres, Mitzrayim. It was in the merit of these women that we were taken out of Egypt because the men, they were very downtrodden. They, they had tremendous despair. They had melancholy. And the women came and they had tremendous emunah. They had tremendous faith in the redemption, in the ge'ula, that things would be better. And they would encourage the husbands. And they inspired their husbands to continue to have faith in God. The men did not want to have any children. They said, look, why should I have a child to be raised as a slave? And the women said, no, we are preparing the children for the redemption. We have to continue the Jewish people. And because of them, they had children. And today we have a Jewish nation. And today it is again in the merit of the righteous women that we are going to be redeemed from this exile. In general, we see today the role of women are very powerful. CEOs of major corporations in the IDF, in Chabad houses, husband and wife have an equal role. And in many places, the women are much more talented and successful than the men. Already we are tasting the, the taste of the redemption. Comes along the Mishnah and says like this. If that is the case, if everything that, that we stated is true, you should know that just like you have your role, your wife has her role. And that is to make sure the house is opened. To bring in those that are poor. Poor monetarily and poor mentally and spiritually. To bring into the home who are the ones that are able to truly inspire the generation are the women. And therefore, the home should be opened for these people. Now, the wife is home dealing with all these children, dealing with all these people that are downtrodden, that are poor, that are poverty-stricken, that have been dejected from other homes. She is bringing counseling. She is bringing food. She is bringing harmony and encouragement to these people. The husband now comes home from the synagogue. He comes home from the study hall. He comes home from, from work. And he starts talking to his wife. What kind of talk? Sicha. Idle chatter. What was going on today at work? What happened? You know, not important things, just chitter chatter. Even gossip, God forbid. Says the Mishnah, Al Tarbe Sicha Isha. You have to respect her role. You have to respect the role of your wife. She is not your accessory. She's not only there for you. She has her own prominence. She has her own responsibilities. And she is the one that is going to bring the redemption. And therefore, do not bother her. This is about your own wife. Surely the wife of your neighbor. From here, our rabbis learn, if you increase excessively to speak idle chatter with your wife, number one, number two, number three, you should know, number one, you're causing bad to yourself. Why does that mean you're causing bad to yourself? Why? Why am I causing bad to myself by talking to my wife? So this is based on the previous concept. Understanding that you are truly half a soul and your wife is half a soul. You have to appreciate her role. Understanding that she now, by helping the poor, by feeding the poor, 
she is now not only fulfilling her mission, but you too are acquiring wealth, spiritual wealth. You are acquiring reward for her actions. Stop bothering her. Why? If you don't appreciate her, at least appreciate yourself. You're hurting yourself. You are diminishing from your own reward. Comes along the man and says, look, this is too Kabbalistic for me. What do you mean I'm going to lose that reward if my wife doesn't do acts of goodness and kindness? It's too spiritual for me. I'm not a Kabbalist. I don't see exactly how my soul is half of her soul. Says the Mishnah, fine. You don't understand Kabbalah. You understand Halacha. Uvoitel midivri seira. Then go learn Torah. If you have nothing to do, don't do it here. Go do something productive. Go study Torah. Says the husband, look, I'm not a big Torah scholar. I don't know how to learn Torah. I'm not into Torah. So the Mishnah tries to encourage the husband a third way. Fine. You don't appreciate the role of your wife. You don't appreciate your own role. So you know what? If you're going to continue to disturb your wife and neglect her responsibilities as a leader amongst the people of Israel, the the end will be that you will inherit hell. What is this terminology, you are going to inherit hell? You go to hell, you, you go down into the purgatory, but what does it mean to inherit? Furthermore, it doesn't say in the future you will inherit. It says now, in the present. In other words, if you will not allow your wife to fulfill her mission, she will tell you, look, you have time. So you help me now. Let us together service these poor people. Go to the store, buy a few hundred pounds of chicken, Go to the store and schlep a few hundred eggs. Go to the store, buy a few hundred pounds of onions. Come, start chopping the onions, make the soup, take out the garbage, mop the floor, clean the windows. Serve these people, clean the plates, wash the dishes. Ah, you don't want to do that. So don't bother me. The end will be that if you will not allow your wife to fulfill her mission, she will be upset. And she will make your life miserable. We see here a very powerful lesson. And that is on Rosh Hashanah. On the new year, God designates how much money we're going to make the coming year. God designates how much health we're going to have the coming year. He also designates how much Agmas Nefesh we are going to have the coming year. Agmas Nefesh means heartache, anxiety. How much heartache, anxiety, and fear we are going to experience in the year to come. Now we have a choice because man is given free choice. We have a choice to channel that anxiety into the study of Torah, into the performance of mitzvot. In other words, to run to a Torah class, to run to be the 10th to the minion in the synagogue, to give 10, 20% of your charity, of your money to charity. Now these are challenges. It's anxiety. I don't want to give so much money to charity. You start worrying, how will I pay for the bills? The answer is you could worry about bills of tzedakah, of charity, or God forbid, you could worry about bills for doctors. You could worry about running to the shul to be the minion or to study Torah, or you could worry, God forbid, to run to the hospital or running to visit other family members in the hospital. You have your choice. It's up to you. And therefore, says the Mishnah, if you will not appreciate the role of your partner in life, then God will bring all of these challenges upon you. There's a powerful story in the Gemara that really underscores this idea. And that is, there was a rabbi who would give charity every day to the poor. 
And the Gemara talks about this in the Tractate of Ksubis, page 67, side B. And there the Gemara says like this. There was a person by the name of Mar Ukva. And Mar Ukva would go every day and give charity. He would do this together with his wife. The poor man had no idea that Mar Ukva was giving him the charity. And so one day he decided he wanted to see who is dropping off money in my house every day. He looks out the window, he sees now somebody coming, and he begins to chase them. Mar Ukva and his wife don't want to embarrass this poor man, so they run away. And he continues to chase them, and they continue to run. Finally, they see an oven, a public oven, that was just swept out. The coal was removed. There was an empty space. So they decided they're going to jump into this little square oven and that way hide from the poor man who was searching them out. While they're standing in this oven, Marukva begins to jump. He says, oh my goodness, my feet. It's so hot over here. My feet are burning. His wife said, my dear husband, if your feet are burning, put your feet on top of mine and I will protect you. Marukva did not understand. You mean your feet are not burning? They're not hot from the floor of the oven? She says, no. But why not? My feet are hot. I'm burning. Marukva's wife said the following. I'll explain you why I am protected and you are not. You see, you give a lot of tzedakah, you give a lot of charity, but you give cash, you give money. The poor man takes the money and needs to go now to the store and buy eggs and buy chicken and buy fish. Then the poor man has to go home. He has to open up the eggs, scramble the eggs, cook the fish, cook the chicken. <coughs> and it takes time till he eats. So from the time you give him the money, until he has the meal, it could be a few hours. When they come to the house, I am the one in the home, and the door is open for poor people all the time. There's ready food. They're hungry. I give them a sandwich. They're hungry. I say, come sit down, have a plate of soup. So they receive their sustenance immediately. And because of this, they are protected. Here we see that the tzedakah, the charity of the woman is even greater than the charity of the man. And this is what the Mishnah is telling us. How careful we have to be and sensitive we have to be to the role of the Jewish woman. Another story. There was a famous rabbi, a famous Hasidic master by the name of Abnochim of Chernobyl. He was a disciple of the Magad of Mizrich. He was a colleague of the Alter Rebbe. And Abnachim of Chernobyl, besides being a great saint, a great Torah scholar, a great mystic, was also very charitable. And he would go to the villages, to the cities around him, and he would see and search what does the people, what do the people of that community need? Do they need a teacher? <clears throat> Do they need a rabbi? Do they need money for the poor? And he would go and collect the money to pay for the teacher. He would collect the money to pay for the rabbi. He would collect the money to distribute to the poor. He came to one talent and he saw that they were missing a mikvah. They had no mikvah for the women to go to mikvah. He went back to his town of Chernobyl. He approached a wealthy man. And he said to him, I need you to support this mikvah. And if you do, I will give you my portion in the world to come. The rich man hears this. Abnochim Chernobyl, the great tzaddik, is giving me his share in the world to come to sponsor a mikvah. It's a done deal. I'm going to do it. And he gave him all the money in one shot. Here, Rebbe, here's the money for the mikvah. 
the fellow Chassidim heard Harab Nochem of Chernobyl gave away his place in the world to come to this rich man. They were all jealous. They said, Rebbe, why is it that he gets your place in the world to come? <clears throat> Simply, <clears throat> Simply because he gave you money for the mikveh. And Nachum Chernobyl said the following. He said, I want to tell you like this. Every day I say in the Shema, the Ahafta, you shall love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Says Rashi, all your might means all your money. But you know what? I don't have money. I'm a poor man. I don't have all my money to serve God. And therefore I feel I'm not able to fulfill that portion of the Shema, I'm not able to fulfill that mitzvah, to serve God with all your might, with all your money. And so now, that they had the opportunity to participate in the building of the mikvah, I told the rich man, if you give your money to build the mikvah in my honor, I am now serving God with all my might. And therefore, you deserve my place in the world to come. My dear friends, <clears throat> we are now learning ethics of our fathers. Ethics of our fathers is all about ethics. It's all about how we act. It's all about refining our character. We are told that one mitzvah can change the world. One good deed, one good action, even one good thought can tip the scale to salvation. The Rambam Moses Maimonides tells us that one should always look at the world, that the world is on a scale of 50% good deeds and 50% bad deeds. One good deed, one good word, one good thought can tip the scale to salvation. And so, learning the Mishnah and being inspired by the Mishnah, let us dedicate ourselves to do more mitzvahs, to study more Torah, and to give more charity. One final note. This Mishnah is Mishnah number Hey, Mishnah number 5. The Gemara tells us that the letter Gimel represents the Gevir, the rich man who is running after the Dalid, the poor man, the Dalut, the Dal, the poor man, to give him tzedakah, to give him charity. So the letter Hey is a combination of the Dalid, the Dalid, right? And the Yud. The Dalid is the poor man. The left leg, the yud, is the charity, the coins of tzedakah. When the poor man receives the tzedakah, he now becomes the letter hey. And so it's in the Mishnah, the fifth Mishnah, the letter hey, which is the letter that represents charity, receiving charity. It's also the letter in which God created the entire universe with the letter hey. As the Gemara tells us, Ki Hashem tzurei lamim. God created the world to come with the letter Yud. And he created this world with the letter He. And so by giving tzedakah, we are contributing to this world. We are becoming a partner with God in creation. And by doing so, we are fulfilling the mission of our souls to send to this world. To create a world of goodness and kindness and harmony. And so we hope and pray that God will bring peace to Israel. Peace to our families. And we will see how the world is created with the letter He. We will see how God permeates every aspect of creation with the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days.